stirring the mushroom coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your mushroom coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started. But first, mushroom coffee. Nice. <clears throat> this one is a little more like a masala chai. That's what it reminds me of. And even healthier for you. Small amount of caffeine. Very small. Gives you focus. Clearer thinking creativity because of the nootropic element, not the stimulant aspect of it, whereas coffee is a stimulant, caffeine is a stimulant. And the difference for me is this, is that I feel this literally in my cognitive process. Coffee I feel in my body. Both are good. Both are good. I've been wanting to pop my creativity. There was a log jam and literally after five days of drinking it, something happened to my writing. And the only way that I can explain it is, is that my creativity came back fog was lifted. Fill in the blank. Some of the unhappiest people I know are people responded angry, magnificent, bad decision makers, unmotivated, jealous, lazy, disconnected, and married. Interesting responses. That was only from a couple hours ago. I got up quite early this morning and was already chatting with Phil from Briar Report. And I, I finally found somebody who gets up earlier than me. Many times, if I'm up pretty early, there's times I get up as early as 3 a.m. Just wake up and then stay up. Wake up and then stay up. And there's times where I'll see somebody tweeting something or online, but they haven't gone to bed yet. I'm just getting up. Well, it was interesting. I said to Phil, what are you doing up this early? And he gets up way before, I'm not even going to say what time, he gets up way before I do and gets more work done by 8 o'clock in the morning than most people do in a whole day. So, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think there's going to be any, Phil, I don't think you're going to have any competition there. I really don't. Uh, I won't be getting up as early as you said you get up. But, I can tell with the quality of the new Briar Report BRTV magazine and platform, I can tell that you've worked hard on it and it has paid off. And even though it's brand new, I can already see the trajectory just going up. It's just going to be a beloved publication, electronic publication, and I'm happy to contribute to it whenever you want. Great job, man. Great job. I'll put a link for it down below, everybody, so you know what I'm talking about. Happy husband, happy life. Or better yet, happy me, happy we. Enough of this happy wife, happy life. Be a man. Be a leader in your house. Lead. 
or I would say be a servant leader, that's not a bad thing, but lead, be the man, be an example to your kids, be an example to your wife or the woman in your life. Don't share everything with her. Share it with a buddy, a brother, with me. Send me an email. But maintain strength in front of your wife. She is looking for a rock. She doesn't want to be the rock. She can be a strong woman in your marriage or in your relationship. And it doesn't matter how educated, how well-spoken, how intelligent she is, how sophisticated she is. She needs a rock. Be the rock. Be the rock. Okay, guys? What are the best hiking boots that you ever had? Put your answer down below. I'd like to see what are the best hiking boots you ever had. I've had many different brands, and the ones I have now are the, I don't know how you say it. Is it Merrill or Morel? I have those. I forget what, exactly which one it is. They're, uh, Ankle boots, they're high. They're not real high. They're, you know, above my ankles. Solid. Really keep me, uh, keep me from twisting an ankle on rocks or logs or anything like that. But what are your favorite and your best hiking boots that you've had if you've tried different ones? Let me know. Put the answer down below. A lot of people will benefit from that. My advice is enjoy it while you can. Some people say, what are you talking about? And my re reply is, whatever you want it to be, enjoy it while you can. There is nothing that is permanent. Everything has an expiration date. Even this old bag of bones has an expiration date. Enjoy it while you can. Build it up. Maintain it. Don't do anything to take away from it. Enjoy it while you can. Do you have a woman in your life? Do you have a man in your life? Enjoy them while you can. If they are not laughing at your dreams, then those dreams aren't big enough. Don't just do what you can. Believe in the impossible. It has to start in your head first. Every great idea started here first. That is why I am really pumping up on the nootropics. Because this is my capital right here. If you've ever had anyone in your life that started declining mentally... You just look at, you know, you look at them and you go, what the hell? And you watch it happening before your very eyes. And then you realize your health and your mental condition, your awareness, your cognitive abilities are so important. Why are you doing anything to disrupt your brain? If they're not laughing at your dreams, then those dreams are not big enough. Have bigger dreams. I took a poll. I said, are you single or divorced? 74% said single. 26% said divorced. And there's a couple separated people in there. Yesterday I saw a video, a video clip compilation of my show intro. It's pretty funny when you see the intros back to back. I'll put a link for it down below. Kudos to the person who put that together. I can't believe I'm just seeing it now for the first time. But I actually 
got a laugh out of it. Oh, another thing. I, I want to start a clip channel. And I want to do it with a partner. Um, I'm not sure how to do it. If there's someone who is interested, maybe someone who's homebound. Maybe you're disabled and you can't get out, but you have technical abilities and you want to earn something. What I would do is I would split the monetization with you. Take my content, put it in small clips, and uh, let's grow the channel. And email me, gb at georgebruno.com, and we'll talk about it. And maybe it's something that you can do on the side. Maybe uh, you're a, a young person. Maybe you're an older person. Maybe you are housebound. Maybe you are physically disabled. That's something that, um, that we could do. But I would split that monetization with you, which can be pretty good. Just let me know if that's something that you're interested in. Another thing, I'm still looking for graphics for the Beast. As in, Good Morning Beasts and Beast Wishes. So, for a t-shirt. some I had some conversations with people about it and then the conversations just stopped. So, if you're a graphic artist, a good sketch artist, let me know. I have some ideas for the t-shirt. And, of course, I'd be willing to pay you for your work. Imaginary lovers never disagree. They always care. They're always there when you need satisfaction guaranteed. Imaginary lover, you're mine all the time. My imaginary lover. The Atlanta Rhythm Section, 1978. Staying fit, trim, and muscular was effortless till I was about 50 years old. About 10 years ago then doing what I did, just living life, wasn't enough. I ended up taking a detour for several years. Thank God that's over. But as you age, you're going to find your body changes. You can go to the gym a couple times a week, eat what you do, stay trim, then all of a sudden you start putting on weight. Nothing has changed except you got older in the way your body deals with exercise and with food changes. So I had to make some changes in things so I could get back to being trim, lean, and muscular again. And I feel good. Someone saw my watch the other day just kind of like spinning on my wrist. And they said, you're going to have to like take a link or two out of that watch. I said, I know my wrists are getting thinner. I mean, I, I was a chunkier kind of guy, and you don't realize until your pants are falling off you or your, your watch is loose. And I opted for a thinner body, a trimmer lifestyle, and man, it feels good. It just feels good just don't have that gut hanging over when you go to tie your shoes or you don't get tired walking upstairs. You can do work around the house or anywhere and not get winded. It's a great lifestyle. It's, it was all part of me getting unstuck and that was close to 10 years ago that I had to do that. You can do it too. You know, 2020 is the year that you get unstuck. I've been saying that. When the army of average has a fire lit under them, they become unstoppable. 2020 is the year that you need traction. Traction, you are stuck. You're stuck right now, aren't you? Yeah, I know. Your dreams have taken a little side, side trip. It's time to rediscover your dreams again and make them not just goals but a to-do list super important they get done 
when they're a to-do list. When they're goals, they just get written down on sticky notes and stuck on mirrors and walls and refrigerators and dashboards. But when it's a to-do list, you end up with the receipts, you end up with proof and metrics, and then you want to go further and further and further. It's awesome lifestyle, the unstuck lifestyle. Everybody, everybody has a plan B, men and women. Everybody, everybody. Men tell me that their woman broke up with them, and then they're surprised that she's with another man a week later. Dude, she had a plan B. Just like you are swiping the night away when you broke up with her. Everyone has a plan B. Don't kid yourself. No one is sitting at home right now crying over you. No one, man or woman, no one is crying over you. If they did, they got over it and they're on to plan B. You need to do the same. That's all part of that stuckness that you are experiencing in your life. Imagine doing demolition in your home and finding a stack of old letters in the wall. My brother, Tony Bruno, did just that, and he's got a channel where he tells their real life story, the people in those letters. It's not your typical channel. I would ask you to subscribe to his channel. I'll put a link for it down below and enjoy it. It's so different. It's different than anything that you've ever watched on YouTube. You'll enjoy it. The American flag is so offensive to Democrats. Apparently, there's not even a flag to be seen during the Democrat debates. Can it be any clearer who they don't support and what they don't support? Why isn't there a flag during the debates? If you're Democrat, explain your party, please down below. Please. Blaming opioids is like blaming a gun. Like that syringe just walked over to your arm all by itself. Those oxy tablets just jumped out of the bottle into your hand and down your throat. Let me tell you something. The opioid crisis is a morality and ethical crisis. It's a crisis of the heart. It's got very little to do with the substance. Very little to do with the substance. It has to do with the person's heart. And the further that we get away from the source, then the more crutches that we need. And then we end up five layers away from the original issue, which is a matter of the heart, because we just cover that up with something, and then cover that up with something, and then cover that up with something. Everybody is the prodigal son. Everybody. And the father of the prodigal son made the first move to bring the son back. Yeah. I'll just leave that right there. There's a new book coming out called, let's see, The Red Pill, let me find the exact, the Red Pill Ideology, The Love Child of Pickup Artists and Feminists, written by Jared Trueheart. I'll be posting a link probably next week about this. Why am I bringing this up? Because I wrote the foreword to the book. And I want you to get the book and take a look at it. Read it. Read a, a chapter a day. You'll have it done in a couple of weeks.
I leave tomorrow to go to Orlando, spend some time with family, spend some time with my brother, Tony Bruno, be doing the Daybreak show from the beach, and uh, some videos I'll probably collab with my brother on a couple of vids that I think you'll enjoy. We're probably going to do like a live Q&A kind of thing, or have a chat somehow, some way from Florida. And then the 21 convention starts next week where I will be speaking and also doing podcast interviews that you've seen, the many interviews with different people, uh, such as Tanner Guzzi, Hunter Drew, Anthony Johnson, Pat Stedman, Stefan Molyneux, several people that you know and you've seen me interview in the past and a few that you haven't seen me interview in the past will be on those interviews. And I will be doing uh, a short version of the Daybreak Show, kind of like the traveling version, the mobile version of the Daybreak Show. And it'll be good. Finish your mushroom coffee, 